Welcome to Hi. TVC Live. <laughs> a little bit last minute. Yeah. Hi. How's everybody? So glad you are here. We've got a bunch of people already in the house. Johnny Lightning and uh, who Will else is and yeah. Kellyanne and uh, Richard. Oh, gosh. Rex. Hey, how nice to see everybody. Let us know if you can hear us and where you're from. Yep. Oh, we we see some people you. from Detroit. Seems to be raining in Wisconsin, um, but it's warm and sunny in Reno. So raining in South Louisiana. Yeah, South Louisiana get a little bit of mess. Well, we're happy you're here. Uh, virtual campground, um, TVC Live. This is your RV community for resources and stories, and uh, we are just so pumped about tonight. We've got the uh, ever elusive Ed Wilcox on the channel. And we've got uh, Liz joining him to make sure he stays in line. So that's going to be cool. Get your RV maintenance questions answered tonight. Yes. Uh, we've had an amazing kickoff to the uh, course. Uh, so thank you for all those that have purchased that. That's been fun. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. Should we? I think we should get straight to it. Yes, because we do so. have a couple of fun announcements, but we want to share that with the Wilcoxes. Yes, so let's, we, we do. So let's just, do just to give you a, so we're going to bring okay. Liz and Ed yep. on. So and then uh, we're we're going to play a little game with them after the announcement. We have we're time. Get we want to get to all y'all's questions. Yeah, so if we got we don't, a lot of questions to get. If to. we don't have time for the game, that's okay. We'll just do your questions. That's but right. Lots of great questions out there already, and I know everybody in the chat's got some yep. queued up. So make sure to start putting them in there here in a minute. And I'll be watching for those questions so we can make sure we get them to Ed. And then uh, then we're gonna uh, play you out with uh, some of our favorite uh, photos from Asheville, North Carolina area. One of our favorite yeah, places we went Really, to. really loved yep. uh, our visit there. Uh, we've got a bunch of photos, so we've broken this up into two parts. So we're gonna have part one tonight and part two next night. All right, so without further ado, ready to get into it? Bring them on! Bring them on! There they <laughs> are! Yay! Liz and Ed! Liz and Ed! Can you hear us? Loving the gifts, by the way. Oh, okay. I, I don't know if we can hear you. Let's see. We got something on our end. Can you hear uh, us? There we go. Yes, we can. Oh, great. Hi. Great. Awesome. I'm going to okay. turn up the volume over yeah. here. I don't know if you guys are using multiple cameras, but it looks like Deborah, you're oh, kind of yeah. out of the Come frame over. here uh, for me. Closer. Yeah. There, how's that? Um, I'll tight, folks. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We I are. I like that. No, we haven't gotten sophisticated enough to use multiple cameras yet, but no. we're, we're going to work on that. <laughs> multiple screens so that I can yeah. try to track chats. But other than that, no, no multiple screens. So that, that I always feel bad when I'm looking down at the chat. Hi, you guys. How are you? Hi, and hi, TVC family. I see there's a lot of us on, almost 60. Awesome. Yeah. That's You're awesome. And new. We are so excited. I know there was a bunch of people putting out the show tonight. And um, Ed is going to go through some um, <laughs> RV questions and some common problems. And we actually aren't in our rig right now. We are quarantining at a friend's house in Crestview, Florida. And I want it, if you have ever seen the show, you know that my internet is notoriously bad. <laughs> no. <Hands on>. What? <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> um, I just wanted to make sure that we were here for you tonight. And so we are actually in my friend's house in her daughter's bedroom. I'm looking at a dollhouse here. <laughs> nice. So we can start playing later. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Here's <laughs> stuffed animals. Yeah. Sweet. The kids are watching the movie. We've got the door locked. <laughs> so awesome. Ask Sweet. Any and all your RV questions. We're here for you. Awesome. Great. Awesome. Well, we, we, do, we do have tons of questions to get to, but we also we have a surprise announcement. Um, so we, we said last week that I, I had a goal that I wanted to reach a thousand subscribers and guess what? We yes! did it! Woo! I don't know what noise making. Okay. Oh, yes! Woo! Now I'm going to have to clean that up. But anyway. <laughs> Yay! Oh, yes. Thank you to everybody on the chat. And yes. <laughs> Yeah, I think a lot of it had to do with those great oh, yeah. one minute tips from Ed. Yeah. I think a lot of folks looked at those and thought this is worth subscribing to. So thank y'all yeah. very much. Yeah, that was awesome. 
Yeah, thank you guys for subscribing. And if you're new to the channel, hit subscribe right now. We've got plenty of stuff. Uh, Deborah and Barry go live every Tuesday with tips and news and all of that. And uh, you can see I'm pointing like this, but <laughs> Barry is an amazing photographer. And behind them, uh, I don't know what side of the screen I'm on, guys. <laughs> You're on um, that but, side for us. <laughs> so that's another, uh, you know perk of subscribing to their <laughs> You're channel. You're sweet. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. All well, right. it's really appropriate, I think, that we have Ed on today. You know why? Why? It is National what? Superhero Day. Oh, yeah. And Ed is the superhero <laughs> RV maintenance. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. So, um, so we thank all the real the other superheroes out there that are in the front yes. line, but definitely for us right now, you are our superhero answering all these questions, keeping everybody from from spending thousands of dollars on their rig. So I'm really excited about talking with you guys yes. and I'm going to let Barry kind of handle most of the questions so I can keep an eye on chat because they're going by fast and I want to make sure we get to the questions. And if I don't get to your question, folks, just repost it and I'll try to get to it. So yes. shall we start? All right. Well, before we get into the questions, I wanted to make sure that we go over kind of the top RV, like, common maintenance problems and how to fix them real quick. So Ed, awesome. can you give us maybe like the top three um, like systems that'll go bad and what you can do about it? Well, the, the top three major systems that go bad are, are usually the furnace, the air conditioner, and the generator. Um, they're the ones that sit for the longest period of time and um, and and they, they just, you, you need to work them throughout the season. A lot of times, most of the things that fail in your coach are just failing because of underuse. So, so if you go through and run your air conditioner even during the winter time, just to get it, you know, to make sure that there's, you know, all the moving parts are still going, and the same with the furnace during the summer. You know, every couple months, run the furnace and make sure that that everything is uh, still heating properly. And then on top of that, the generator, you should be, you know, running your generator monthly for at least an hour running a, running a draw. So as long as you're doing those things and going through and making sure your systems continue to run, there generally won't be too many other problems. Awesome. Thanks, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing if not succinct. So yeah. <laughs> it won't be when you interview me and we go 90 minutes. <laughs> But sometimes no, you gotta go. Good. I mean, these are good. These are going to be good questions, and we need to get thorough answers, right, Ed? Let's do it. Yeah. So, um, uh, Liz, do you have anything else? Because I, I have a, a few things on this end. Nope. And it looks like the chat is going wild. I yes. see Johnny Lightning, Karen, uh, Camille's in the house. What up, Todd? Awesome. Let's get started. So you, you touched on this, but we, we were thinking so many people have been sitting still for so long and specifically with generators and, um, you know, in order to get prepared for us to start moving when all this stuff, uh, what do we need to do with our generator uh, as far as the load is concerned? Is that running one air conditioner, both air conditioners? So if, you're, if your rig has two air conditioners, I would run both. And they'll, they'll swap back and forth between which one is running. But I would just say once a month for an hour and run air conditioning, refrigerator on, you know, just run things as normal. But make sure you put a good load on it. And as long as you do that once a month for about an hour, you shouldn't have too many issues. Um, and also, if you're going to let your generator sit for a long period of time, um, you can drain all the fuel out of the float bowl of the carburetor to uh, to make sure it doesn't gunk up. So it'll actually start easier the next time because it'll put it'll put fresh fuel in there as opposed to fuel that's been sitting in the float bowl of the car. Okay, right. that sounds really important. That's <laughs> um, so, we do have a question. Well, my, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Deborah. I was going to say we had another question about generators while you were on it. What size um, generator will work with yep. a thirteen thousand five hundred AC? Um, BTU AC from George Meyer, Mayor. From George, is it a is it a coach? Is it a travel trailer? A fifth wheel? That's you know all the. It depends on space on what you have. Also, fifth wheels will generally have. Um, if you're adding a generator onto a fifth wheel, it generally has one that's set up for it, and it, it usually has a full kit that you can order from the manufacturer and then put your generator in. 
Um, now, if it's a 50 amp, you're going to need 50 amps of power. And again, with 30, you're going to need 30. So those big, like, multi-fuel generators that you have at, like, the Camping Worlds and um, all those other places that um, – Something that actually says 50 amp, you're gonna need you're gonna need all that in order to run it off of the generator. George says it's an Airstream travel trailer. Yeah, with a, and he wants to run a 13,500 BTU AC. Um, I mean, as long as he can get, I would say two two of the little generators from Harbor Freight linked together. They have the whole kit. You can get the two generators and the link, and then you can run it straight to your coach. Okay. And you should have 12 hours of uh, air conditioning. Okay. Um, one fill up from each generator. Nice. 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 All right. Any other questions Hi. over there? Um, Liz, <laughs> this one's for you. Uh, Johnny Lightning wants to know if, since it's Superhero Day, if that means you have to make Ed a cake. Um, <laughs> I made him a baby, so I'm going to say no. <laughs> oh, there's that. <laughs> <laughs> always there's that all right we had another question that came in earlier before we started the live um cool. they so jerry said biggest concern for me is operating and maintenance fixing a broken slide for me is unlikely they have a gasser 2013 newmar canyon star he's worried about being level and ensuring that the stabilizers go uh, all the way out without the well, let's see oh that the sides go all the way out um, let's see. Maintenance. So the question really is just what are the top tips for preventing these issues? Uh, um, for slide issues, really the only thing you have to do with slides is run them in and out. Just once a month, run your slide in, run your slide back out. You can do it twice if you're feeling saucy, but really <laughs> that's all you need to do. As long as you keep the internal workings moving and you do it once that once a month, you really have no other maintenance to do on slides. And that's for almost all of the slides across the board. As long as you keep them moving and keep the inner workings looped up, that's about all you're going to have to do. Keep the seals clean and make sure it's not covered in like pine poop. But as long as you're good, as long as you're keeping it clean, that's really keep it clean and keep it moving. Saucy. For slides. Saucy. I like that. Okay. Saucy. Schoolhouse 1868 has a question about her refrigerator. They have a Dometic okay. three-way refrigerator that stopped working on propane. A new a new regulator was installed and is providing adequate pressure. The RV repair facility can't determine what's wrong. Can't figure out why it won't run. Thoughts? Um, they put a new regulator on. Um, it could be electronic. Um, it could not be seeing twelve volts at That's the. That's the question. Yeah, hold on. I'm just having him reread that. Okay, so sorry. Sure. Yeah, that was a lot of information. <laughs> Okay, it's an important question. Um, it could be a twelve volt issue. I would check batteries because if the if the gas valve isn't seeing at least ten and a half volts, then it's not going to turn on. So if the coach isn't plugged in and they're trying to run it on propane, then it just could not have enough battery power in order to in order to have to do all of the different systems because there are safeties in place to make sure you maintain 12 volts. And as soon as you go below that, there's certain things that will close and safeties will shut off so that you, it doesn't continue to run. Okay. Liz, do you agree with that? <laughs> so we did have another refrigerator question from Doug Poole that has to do with Doug Poole. Doug Poole. He's an occasional camper. So he's asking, is it better for the refrigerator to run all the time or to shut it off when it's not being used? Well, that's that's really up to you. Um, for me personally, when we park our RV, I'm going to run the refrigerator only because the more things you keep running and the more you keep them running, the longer they generally run. Um, when you start parking these coaches for, for years or months and, you know, things, it, there's no explanation, but things just stop working for no reason. Motion is lotion. That's, That's like right. a person. Motion is lotion. <laughs> if you spend too much nice. time in bed, nice. you're going to get old and crickety, right? And yeah. that's the same, uh, you know, with your RV, you want to exercise those systems. That's what we found out last summer. That's right. Yeah, we learned that the hard, <laughs> the way. hard way. The expensive and hard way. Yes. Right. yes. Uh, we let it sit too yeah. long. Thanks for that question, Doug. <laughs> Doug's a longtime friend of mine from back in uh, high school. 
Um, okay, so another question someone's asking, Todd's asking, he's not a mechanic. So what are the top tools absolutely necessary to be able to work on your own rig? Write this down, folks. All right, so top <laughs> tools. Um, I would say a socket set, just a regular 3-8 socket set. Um, a drill with uh, Phillips flat and also square bits. So if you get like a little drill and it comes with one of those little cases that like has all the different bits in it, that should be good. Um, I would get a good ratcheting screwdriver and then um, some adjustable wrenches. Really, that's all you need. You don't need a lot. It's all very simple systems. A lot of it is just simple. You, you know, you take a screw out and then you've got gas fittings or you've, you know, it's, it's so many very little, tiny, simple systems all just packed inside of a wrapper. And that's all that the, that's all that these different manufacturers do. They just make the wrapper and they're putting in the other parts from the other companies. So they're all really the, close to the same. And uh, how do you feel about a multimeter? Is that like the next level up on tools or should you start with something like that? I would say a multimeter is almost too far you can get a, a a 12 volt and 120 volt tester that it's a it's a it tests in the in the vicinity so if you like move it towards it, you can see okay it's got 12 volts then you can flip a little switch and be like you can move it and okay it's got 120 also so i would get something like that and then also a plug tester i don't really think a multimeter is something that everybody needs to go out and buy. overkill okay all right what is a tester a plug tester is it's got it's it's got thank you Liz. It. it's got, it's got the three prongs of a plug and then it's usually brown it's about this big and it's got three lights on the back it's got a green a yellow and a red light on the I've back i've seen that in our rv <laughs> it's, it's also the status of the plug when you plug into it and they also generally have a uh, a gfci on them so you can test each plug with the gfci and then you can find where all of your new GFCIs are that you have no idea where they are. It's fun. So that, it's fun. <laughs> so basically if I plug that into an outlet, it's going to tell me if it's working or not. It's going to tell you okay. if it's correct polarity, cross polarity, if it's, you know, if there's power going to it, and then you can also test it. And Liz, can you define polarity for me? Yeah, I was, that was what I was <laughs> How deep in the weeds. Polarity. Gets deeper and deeper, folks. It does. Um, I'm trying to buckle see. If, up, buckle up. Buckle up. So you know how on a plug there's the wide side and the skinny side. Well, sure. the wide side is ground and the skinny side is power, and it has to make sure that it's getting the proper one plugged from the wall. Not everything cares about polarity. Most things don't, but more sensitive things care about polarity. Like what's an example? Electronics. Your computer cares about polarity, but your computer also has a little box right there that converts it all to DC and sends it to your computer. Gotcha. That's just a fancy. Oh, converter. I don't know why I, I, my computer's right here. I don't know. Just, it. just for the record, I, I care about polarity. So, that's, <laughs> uh, so we do have a slide question uh, that came in earlier and the new module, uh, the, the, the RV maintenance course, the new module is we about have a slides. New module. Yeah. Yes. Um, uh, Rob says his Tiffin, um, 40 H Q S H whatever <laughs> driver side rear bedroom slide won't slide, which sounds like a pretty big problem. Uh, he yep. hears the motor running, but it's not moving. So on those motors, on some of those motors, I don't know exactly what type it is, but there is a little bit of a shear shaft. So if it has too much pressure running to it, it can actually break off a shaft that you can replace. Um, and what it is, is it so it takes it takes the shaft out and breaks that instead of breaking the motor or any of the other pieces. So it could have a shear shaft. Um, it could also be low on hydraulic fluid. Um, there's a few things that it could be, but um, I would need more information in order to go deeper on that one. Yeah, if you're watching, let us know. Yep, okay. awesome. absolutely. Okay, from we got lots of questions Ready to up. RV. They want to know, and they might have to give us more information. It says ethanol-free gasoline for the gen set. That's all okay. there. So Question mark. You're, you're really not supposed to put a whole lot of ethanol fuel in your RVs unless, unless 
they are flex fuel vehicles. So there's a certain there's a certain threshold that all gas companies put in their vehicles, uh, or all gas companies put in their fuel. But then there's a higher ethanol content. If you're driving a Ford and it is a designated flex fuel vehicle, then the generator should also be ready for that. Now. I'm not Jayco or Tiffin or any of these companies, so I don't know if they're actually putting some sort of um, newer model. Like if there's something. some sort of conversion that they're putting in, so the generators can run E85. But I would just run regular. I wouldn't. I wouldn't try and you know get more out of running ethanol-based fuels. I would just run whatever the, the manual says. The manual is going to tell you exactly what to run, okay. and you can check both the manual for the coach itself for your your puller and also for the generator it says what fuels it will run on okay okay cool. Inside. good answer but on the side of caution would be no just put don't. regular 87 and don't try to go you know with e85 and it could i don't know what it can do i don't know probably wouldn't work as well yeah you're gonna lose economy you're gonna lose power All right. ethanol is a thicker fuel and you need more of it in order to get ignition Science. 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 Yeah. All right. Science. <laughs> <laughs> Kellyanne wants to know, she says y'all look so cute with your matching glasses. Is Ed going to get a matching headband? <laughs> oh. <laughs> she, also, she also wanted to get your thoughts, Ed, on all this talk about RVs going electric. Would that take just super duper huge batteries? <laughs> well, it depends on how they how they deal with solar. If they can make if they can get an efficient enough solar package on the roof that can charge the number of batteries that are inside of the coach. If it's a diesel pusher and you have a true solar rig, then you're also going to have a hydronic heater which runs all your hot water and your heat. So in theory, if you can remove propane from your rig and make it all solar, and if the, the companies can actually make a package of batteries that isn't going to be too intrusive, I'm all for it. You know, I'm all for it because it, it makes the amount of time that you can be in one place. I mean, you can just hang out on the beach for like weeks with just solar. So do you think it's possible in the near future, though? Well, I think with a diesel pusher and enough solar panels on the roof to continue to charge the batteries that you already have, I do think it's possible. Cool. I mean, the Revel has no propane. A lot That's of the new true. Tiffins, Winnebago Revel. A, lot of the, a lot of the new Tiffins, like the big full-size 40-foot rigs, don't have any propane. That's becoming I more, more of a thing. RV. Yeah, propane. Oh, plus we, we know somebody that took the propane took out the propane and made it all, all yeah. electric. They went crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah, because you, your hot water sister runs off of diesel fuel, so it all just it it just works off of the tank that's already there yeah. instead of running off of a separate system. Yeah, yeah. There's a certain uh, elegance to that. Yeah. Okay. Simplicity. Simplicity is always nice. All right. Um, Integrated Natural Health is asking about their refrigerator as well. It does not like to run on propane. It starts sometimes and randomly turns off. It is a nor cold. Um, it could just need to be cleaned. Um, it could, how often are you running it on propane is the big question. I try and cycle mine back and forth from electric to propane, like once a month, once a quarter, just to make sure that it's continuing to turn on. What um, would you clean on that, Ed? Say again? What, what would you clean? Oh, well, there's... That's the thing. There's not a ton. I mean, you can you can open up the area where the burner is and see if uh, cobwebs or whatever, cobwebs, dust, uh, squirrel stuff. I mean, but um, there's not a ton you can do in there yeah. once you get in there. So I mean, that might be somebody. That might be something to call a uh, an actual RV mechanic, especially if it's still running on electric and you can and all your stuff is staying cold. As long as it's still working properly and you don't have any plans on moving, because that's really the only time it runs on propane yeah. is when you're going down. Yeah. Or unless you run out of power. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, well, I want to add to that. I know our friends 
uh, over at Chicory's Travels, uh, Julie and Sean, they were having issues. They bought a new rig, and they were having issues with their refrigerator where it wasn't getting cold enough, I think. And they were calling the manufacturer because they're still under warranty. And they said, well, we can do that for you. We can come out and, re you know, replace it or whatever. But because of COVID-19, we can't do that for, you know, X amount of months. And I was telling Ed about it. And what did you say was the issue? Do you remember what I'm talking about? Yeah. So there's, there's a certain distance that the back of the refrigerator has to be from the outside wall. And if it's too far away, too much air passes through and it actually doesn't get hot enough. Hmm. So you have to get the coils to get hot enough so that you can get the interior to be cold enough. Because you're not actually cooling the air. You're drying the heat out of it. So who knew? Yeah, so you just you need Happy. to there there could be distant too much distance from the back of the refrigerator to the wall, which would act you there's there's fans that you can get and then you close up that space and then you draw air through. Um you can put fans up in the ceiling vent and then it'll draw air through and it'll actually work more efficiently. Yeah, so I wonder if she's asked if she said it doesn't work at all or it doesn't work well. Uh, when there's on Primain, you're talking about the Integrate Health, that's Larry. Yeah. They're saying that um, they'll look at cleaning it, but that it try. Uh, it sometimes does and sometimes doesn't, it sounds like. Okay. It starts sometimes, randomly turns off. And this is a residential fridge. Yeah. Oh, yeah. it's a residential yeah. fridge? That, so, yes. if, it, if it's a residential fridge and it's randomly turning on and turning off, that's a whole new spectrum of issues. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> well, I don't think it's, it just doesn't run okay, so on propane. The, the, it's on, it's on oh. when they're electric, I think. Okay, so does it work on, pro or is it supposed to work on Yeah, I didn't propane? think residential did run on propane. Am I? Yeah. Um, well, most residentials will not run on propane. Yeah. yeah. Um, but if, if it's a residential style, then it will have the propane hookup. But if it's a straight residential, it's just 110 for the wall. Yeah, I think it's we have not new really, so. yeah, he's saying it's not really a residential, it's a Norcold that is dual fuel. Okay. Oh, it's got, it's got the two big, the two big uh, yeah. doors on the front. And dual probably. fuel. Okay, uh -huh. so that is, dual fuel is, is power out of the wall or propane. Okay. And so, probably happening is it's just not been run on propane in so long that um, it may just need a service, have somebody come out there, make sure the nozzles aren't clogged, make sure that there's no, um, you know, little critters or there could be a short. Yeah. Um, I, would, I would almost have somebody out and come to take a look at it. Unless you're feeling froggy. I mean, you can pop that cover off and, you know, poke your little head in there and see what you got. You can fix it yourself. You can fix it yourself. <laughs> The, the first thing I fixed on my RV was was uh, the water heater wouldn't work. It was we had a fifth wheel, big alpha fifth wheel, and the water heater wouldn't work. So I just went outside and started just jiggling stuff, and then the water heater turned on. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, just jiggle. So yeah, so technically like jiggling. Nothing else jiggle. So it's like with a back door knob, right? You just just jiggle it, yeah, just right. jiggle it, yeah. Yeah. just give it. Yeah, I know how. <laughs> well, and so, okay, so building on refrigerators, we, we also have a residential refrigerator, and it leaks. So we've been told that probably one of the hoses is, yeah. is plugged hose in the back from the freezer. It leaks water from the freezer or from the refrigerator? It's coming out of the back of the freezer and going into the drain pan below, but of course all that's frozen. And so it just it goes onto the on water the on the floor. Yeah. It only happens every now and then. And we have, we've had two people suggest two things. One is that there's a, a the, the uh, hose in the back is clogged up and, and things aren't draining properly. We've also had people tell us that when you're hooked up to water pressure and if you're not using a gauge and the water pressure is too high, that somehow that's pushing water out. It could be, it could have a seal that's not quite, um, it, it could be, like a weird pex fitting in a spot yeah. that was kind of funky when they were putting it in. And it could be just too much water pressure and it's, it's making it weep. Um, our, our water, yeah. <laughs> our uh, maker and our alpha didn't work at all. And it would just, it would just leak into the corner of the floor. Yeah, so I finally true. just got a pair of vice grips and just Clamped kicked it. it. Yeah. Okay. So okay. I, I just kicked it off. But 
with the hose in the freezer, if you get a, a can of compressed air, yep. you can generally jam that little red tube yep. into the drain hole and blow it out, and it might send some some black stuff by. Okay, great. Another thousand dollar tip for you. There yes, you go. that is. Well, if I'm feeling saucy one day, I might try that. <laughs> yes. yes. So yeah, so there's been saucy and froggy so far. Yes, so I those like are it. The, those are the you things you have to You might have to define froggy for me, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Before we move on, I just want to, you know, Ed just said there might be a kink in it, something like that. And I found that just living in an RV, we've lived in an RV for almost four years and knowing Ed and he, he feels froggy and saucy, you know, quite often when something isn't working right, he's got to figure it out. Right. And, um, there was something wrong with our electricity in oh, like the back of our rain. <laughs> And he spent months tearing up the wires and, you know, I didn't even know, like, you know, undoing little places and all of a sudden there's like this, you know, city of wires. And I'm like, oh, that's where all that stuff is. <laughs> and after about a month of digging, you know, because he was in school full time, so he'd just play with it, you know, on a weekend when I wasn't forcing him to do something. Um, <laughs> and he, it was it was just a kink, right? It was, it was just underneath the bedroom slide the wire had gotten caught underneath the slide mechanism and it like smeared the uh -huh. wires. So they were all kind so of separated, kind of like but I was getting hot skin on the whole coach also. So I fixed that one little spot and then now everything, everything works. works great now. So we actually had a slide problem. The first day we hit the road, I shared this uh, story a couple weeks ago and Ed had to manually crank it up and or crank it in and, you can't really tell. Well, Ed, if you sit up straight, you can tell. Well, you don't have to stand. There's not a lot of space in between the bed and the back wall no. of a class. No. I'm just going to throw that out there. And right. that's where I was, like, so, laying on my side. Like, you got this on video, video, right? Getting, like, three clicks out of it each time. Yeah, oh. so it took us, I don't know, over an hour to get. And by us, I mean Ed and me. <laughs> you know, for firing beside him. Right. Um, but basically the point is, you know, if you look long enough, you know, that's what the service dealers are doing. Like you don't have to be a certified RV tech like Ed to work at a dealership or to work at a shop. And so, you know, when they say, oh, I, someone in the comments said, oh, you know, they can't figure it out at the dealer. It's really just, you just have to keep tinkering and seeing. And a lot of the times, the problem is like something shredded or, you know, there's it could be a fuse or yeah. a breaker. We've had, I mean, I came home one day, Liz was like, Oh no, the air conditioning won't work. And I walked inside and flipped the breaker. Oh yeah. The it was, <laughs> I was, you guys, it was right. like a hundred. Oh, I did years. the opposite. It was the heat. I couldn't get the heater on and it was like freezing. Yes. So. Yeah. She's in Tampa during the summertime. She mm -hmm. calls me and she's like, ah, the air conditioning. Ah. I was just panicked. That's a great invitation of Liz. Yeah. I'm you, good like that. You just do those. <laughs> uh, Camille Tell is watching more than a wheel, and she does a great Liz Wilcox. Oh, <laughs> we'll have to. Any, we'll have to get her on. We'll get have her on, and we'll have her yes. do that. All right, let's ask yeah, another yeah. question. Karen right. Roscoe asked, "They're full timers, and hot water heater with the anoid. The anoid. Anoid. One yep. point. Rob. Is it okay to remove the anoid and just put a plug with a drain mm. and flush the heater more often? Uh, no, the anode rod is actually super important. The So on a suburban water heater, the tank is actually made out of, it's just stainless, or not even stainless steel. It's just a steel tank with a glass line. Almost like a thermos, so, right? It's like a, it's almost like a yeah, thermos. It's, it's like a thermos, but if, you know, an RV goes down the road under hurricane and earthquake conditions at all times. So if you get a crack in that glass lining or if you get a scrape in that glass lining, that's steel. It's going to rust. The point of the anode rod is to be a sacrificial um, corrosion. So so that way it, the corrosion attacks the anode rod instead of the steel tank. So um, – you're going to have to suck it up and pull the anode rod out every time you do it, because that's really the only way with a Suburban, unless you want to have a rusty tank. I, did, your... I, I, uh, I We don't have a Suburban, but I, I did watch that part of the video in the course, and uh, I, I thought it was pretty easy. I actually could do that. Oh, yeah. It's just like a it's like a three-quarter or a seven-eight socket, and you just pull it out 
get your feet wet, wait for it to all drain out, stick it back in, and if it's still good, and you're done. I mean, you get a little wand to rinse it out. It doesn't take very long. Yeah. And I mean, really put, you could, I mean, yes, you could put a plug in there to drain it quicker. It's not advised. You're, you're going to want to keep that. And also there are different levels. There are different qualities of anode rods as well. So they, they do come in different levels of quality, ones that will last longer, ones that are different materials, ones that um, some that are just the ones from the manufacturer. And then there's also the super cheap ones as well. Okay. So there's a lot of options with anode rods. Okay. But it's a purpose. Don't remove it, or your hot water heater is going to go bad really quickly. Yeah. She no, says be thank you. Repair. Yes. You're welcome. And Camille concurs that a lot of times the dealers really can't replicate it. You just have to keep playing with it and fix it yourself. So she concurs with what you said earlier. Yeah, we we've taken it to a dealer and and, and they've said, well, we're not sure, but our rate's 175 an hour, and we'll <laughs> we'll figure it out. It's like okay, oh, well, that yeah, sounds right. great That's to not us. So good. Yeah. yeah. Course is only 197. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's I see. <laughs> All right. So we have we have uh, other questions um, here. Oh my gosh, so many questions. Okay. While you're looking at that, I just want to shout out um, Liz. Patricia Watts is on, and she's one of our new students. Oh, hey, hey, Patricia. Patricia. Oh. That's my sister so you're automatically my favorite I love my sister. you're not allowed to have actually, favorites you're a teacher true. i'm actually patricia i'm going to write your name down and i'm going to pull all our students i know i'm jumping the gun here oh you do it yeah you're uh all right, so see it look at he's on the wall <laughs> that was so easy so if you're a new student shout out on the chat please yeah, yeah, we, right. we want to make sure we get your we want to make sure we get your name on the wall. All right, so uh, what happened to my chat? Flamingo, uh oh, we lost our chat over Hold here. On. Hold on, I have to fix. I I pushed a button wrong and lost chat. That's okay. I'm gonna put the link to the course in the comments, and we'll talk about it a little more in a minute after the questions. Okay. But if you guys are interested, the course is actually called Fix It Yourself. It's 197 bucks. Like Barry just said, you know, the dealership's happy to. You know, take that 175 an hour. Uh, this is a one-time fee. You get lifetime access. I'm going to put it in here just for you guys to go through the sales page and kind of see what it's about while we keep answering these questions. Cool. Perfect. Perfect. All right. So uh, someone named Flamingo Moon Campers. I know who that is. Ooh, Flamingo Moon. Yeah. Sounds, said, uh, Sounds lovely. I, I don't know what this really means, but how to replace the rollers. On the slides. It's all these are all slide okay. rollers. So slide rollers are a little bit of a hassle because you generally have to take the slide out. Yeah. Oh mm. wow. <laughs> oh. So um, I know that question has been asked before, and I've seen it, and I remember the the flamingo. But fixing rollers generally means you have to take the slide out. All right. So that's a that's a so, big deal. That is a big deal. It is it is quite a big deal. Um, unless you know somebody who knows, a, a, you know, a better way to do it. But you have to you have to move the slide up, and then disconnect it from all the mechanisms, and then move all the mechanisms in, but keep the slide out, and it's like on stilts, just so you can move it out of the way enough to get underneath the slide to change the rollers. That sounds dangerous. Um, there are things. It's that, a big job. Yeah, there are a few things, you know, you should get professional help on. Uh, and we say yeah. that in the course, too. Like, there's general maintenance you can do on an air conditioner. But, but, you know, for the price of parts and, you know, the price of new air conditioners, at a certain point, you just want to get a yeah. new air conditioner, right? You know, at a certain point, you just want somebody to take your slide out for you. Right. But, I mean, it's kind but, of a big but, job. but you asked, you said but, earlier... One of the ways prevention would be keep it rolling, right? So to keep using it. Yeah. And so hopefully then you wouldn't yeah, have to keep, replace the rollers. Right. Because if you if you keep the roller in the same place all the time, it's just a plastic bushing on a metal bolt. So the bolt can actually bend. I mean, the bolt can bend, the roller can wear out. So if you continue moving them back and forth, you won't get the you know a possible bent bolt, or you've seen some slides that actually sink a little bit. Mm -hmm. 
and then it mm-hmm. takes it, so so if you keep it moving then you you run into less of those issues and do you need to keep them oiled and she says like because she knows nothing <laughs> with slides all you got to do is keep them clean just keep it clean and um with wiper seals also just you know, if you start seeing some sort of a buildup on it, just wipe it with soap and water. You don't have to go crazy face. So that's how you clean a slide? Yeah, just you just wipe it. Just wipe it with soap and water. Um, like top and bottom? So around the outside of the slide, there's a seal. Yeah, there's a right. seal between the slide and the wall, and then also between the wall and the slide. So on both sides, there's a, there's a set of seals. As long as you wipe those off and make sure they stay clean and pliable and, you know, rubbery, yeah. then not all broken, then that's all you have to do. And how often really do you clean them? Really so little that you have to do. How often should you be cleaning them? Um, when you clean the RV or if you start noticing that you've got a little bit of residue or something. I mean, just, just be aware. I would say... Um, one of the things that I like to do is I like to just do walk arounds on the regular. And because that way you know what different looks like. If you're constantly walking around your rig, if something come, like sticks out to you because it's different, you'll know those things. Get to know. So I, I would say just do walk arounds and then when you notice something or if it's on your maintenance schedule, it's just, you know, jump on it and do it. Okay. okay. All right. This question from Tamara Schultz. Um, for someone getting a brand new travel trailer, what is the number one upgrade you recommend to prevent future issues? That's well, I can think of I can think of a set of upgrades. Let's do it. A set of upgrades that you should always buy when you buy a new coach. Three things. One. One. Um, surge protectors. Surge protector is the first thing you should do. Before you plug your RV into anything, you should always know the source of power. Two, the second thing you should buy Two. is um, tire pressure monitoring. A lot of people have issues with blowing tires. So if you know your tires are going to blow, it's a lot safer to pull over before they do. Right. So a tire pressure monitor, um, a surge protector, and... The third one. You said three, not me. So <laughs> <laughs> three. Three sounded good. Um, <laughs> make sure you know how to change a tire on your own trail. Yeah. So maybe I mean, do something. a dry run in your in your driveway. Make sure you have everything you need to change a tire, unless you plan on calling somebody when a tire do does pop. So what do you need to change a tire on an RV? Because I know for us, so he's he mentioned having the tire pressure monitoring system. We actually didn't have one. We have one now, and the wheel, you know, when one wheel pops, the next one is coming. Like it yeah. puts too much pressure, yeah. and so it can become really dangerous. And depending on the coach you have. If you have a lot of undercarriage, you know, it can really like ruin a lot of stuff. So that's really important. But I know when we did it, you know, you, um, we were at Camping World and, you know, we had to buy the tires, but didn't you replace something too? And you had to buy like a bottle jack or something. So what tools do you need to so, in order to change so it yourself? It depends on what you have. That's the, that's the shortest answer. It depends on what you have. If you have a class A or a class C, a good bottle jack that will lift up the tire off of the axle should be sick, should be, you know, sufficient. Or if you've got these levelers that are, you know, insta jack, you can just jack up that one leveler and then, you know, pick up a tire. Is that safe? Uh, you're only doing it for a short period of time. Okay. Um, you're not doing like long term. You're not leaving it overnight with the jack up there, you know. Um, as far as travel trailers are concerned, there's two different types of suspension. There's the leaf spring style, and there's also um, like rotating arm style. Some of them lend to being jacked up better than others. Um, there's these little like Nike swoosh looking chalk block things that you can drive up on with another wheel, and then it'll pick up the whole side. Oh, if okay. not, you'll have to just use a jack. Um, a scissor jack is the simplest. But you can use that for your RV. No yeah, problem. you can use, I mean, anything you can use that is rated for the amount of weight that you're picking up. Gotcha. And then that's safely. You don't want to. 
Right. You don't want to pick. You don't want to try and pick up something that's way too heavy with the equipment that you have, because then you're you're running into big safety issues. I do have a follow up question regarding tires, and maybe this could be your number three if you approve of it. Um, the, um, the if you're buying a new trailer, whether it's brand new off a lot or buying it used from someone, um, what's the deal with? I hear the phrase "China bombs," tires from China that aren't very good. Uh, should that be something that you look at to make sure your tires are in good shape? Well, you, you should always know the condition of your tires. Um, that should be something that you're constantly looking at because it's your biggest connection with movement. So maybe always knowing what the condition of your tires is. You should always check your, your tire pressures and such. <sighs> China bombs. Ed has a controversial opinion. Oh, I have a very okay. controversial opinion. China bombs. It's not the tire's fault. It's the people who aren't checking the pressures. Okay. All right. So, so regard those tires could be just fine if people were paying more attention to their their what, what status they're in, what condition they're in. Yes. A tire blowout is two things. It's a, a a drop in tire pressure preceded by a rise in heat from friction. Okay. So if you get the drop in temperature and then the or the, you get the drop in pressure and then the rise in, in temperature, then the tire explodes. And if you have a tire next to it, there's been so much heat and pressure sent out from that tire that you should then change any tires that are yeah, adjacent to it. And that's why a tire pressure monitoring system is so important. And and we we bought one uh, oh gosh, a year ago because you know we knew it was important and I installed it last week. Yeah, that's how important it was. <laughs> Yeah, but, but I mean, it gives you it gives you pressure indication and also temperature indication. So when you start going beyond the safe parameters, it will alarm you so that you can just pull over and check it out. You might have a nail in the tire. You might just have a soft tire. Right. You don't know, or you could have two blown out tires. Yeah. You choose. Yeah. So in the chat, um, a couple of suggestions for you on what could be that number three thing you were looking for. <laughs> One person at said a walk a water filter, and another, a water pressure regulator. Yes. Yes, um, a regulator. Oh, my gosh, you guys. Seriously. I'm going to take you. <laughs> Liz, this one. <laughs> Y'all suggest in the comments. He has been hitting me all night. He hasn't even noticed. <laughs> You've been, like, just this close. Anyway, yes, number three from Liz Wilcox. You heard it here first. Get the regulator for your water because... We first, so we were stationary to begin with, and we got our new coach. It was a 2007 Jayco Greyhawk Class C. It's what we have now, and I'm not gonna say anything naughty. <laughs> and um, we we were so excited to go on our first trip. My friend Catherine invited us. She was house sitting. They said we've got an RV pad, Fairhope, Alabama. Any of you driving and vibing folks that are watching with us, welcome. They're from Fairhope. Yay. And um, we we plugged in. We went to bed. We were there so late, right? We were like, oh, it'll take two hours. It took like five. You know, we didn't know. And then and, when we got there, I had to go and get a plug adapter because it was a 50 amp hookup and we had a 30 amp hookup. Yeah. So then I had to go to Walmart in the RV oh, to no. go. <laughs> we didn't have our car because no. we were only going for a quick weekend. But anyway, um, we just um, we just plugged in the water and we woke up to our brand new brand new to us rig flooded with oh, water. Oh I, no! I heard, not for my looks. I am blind, and so I'm walking, you know, to the bathroom <laughs> blind, and I step and I feel this very thick, super nice, like wedding oh, gift oh. towel, right? <laughs> and I feel it, and it's soaked. <laughs> And we had a child at the time, she was like three, and I was like, Chelsea, what did you do? You know, like I sleep through her playing with the water. Right. And I turned around to get my glasses on and the whole pig was flooded. Wow. Unfortunately for us at the time, we were completely level, so it wasn't draining out of the RV. Oh, we yeah. had been asleep for six hours. So yes, number, so what did we say? We said that Tire pressure system. Tire pressure, uh, surge, surge protector. Surge protector. And, and water, water pressure. Water, water regulator. Those are great. You, you can add the water filter on top of that because there are a lot of places that have quite, oh, uh, gross, yeah. what's yeah. a good word? Uh, 
Nasty. Terrible one. <laughs> like yeah. either it's super minerals or it's or it just tastes like it came out of a water treatment yeah. plant. We really like you know, the filter. And, yeah, and we just run a regular whole home filter in line on the hose. Yeah. And I've got like one hose that's set up ready to go when we get on site. It just doop 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 and done. How'd that go again? Right. <laughs> doop doop doop. Um <laughs> All right, so we have a, another question, and I just want to point out this person in particular. Joanne has a question. She was number 1,000 subscriber yes, on YouTube. Joanne. Yeah. <laughs> so I just want to applaud you, Joanne. Plus, yeah. ask your question, which is she has one leveler that goes down fine but does not raise properly, and she'll be solo full-time in July. So I guess the question is, uh -huh. what, what's going on? There's there's a set of springs that okay so it's one of two things, either the springs that pull the pull the leveler back up are weak and broken and they need to be replaced, or there's a see I don't again I don't I don't there's a lot of information I don't have or it could be a hydraulic pressure issue mm -hmm. it could be a bad seal that's why it's not coming back up but my um my first my first instinctive guess is to say the springs are weak that actually pull up the the landing gear yeah they're the hydraulics when you get into those things uh can be pretty complex but most yeah. of the manuals will walk through a reset on that right system and that that perhaps she could look at the manual if she has one or find one on on the web and it might walk through a reset that would reset the the, the levels on those things right and, and also um if they start acting funny, you can also check the hydraulic fluid because when the fluid starts getting low, hydraulics yeah. don't work yeah. anywhere close to right. Yeah, yeah, that'll start messing things up. And, and and while we're talking about those things, we recently had an experience where we were pulling into a campground and they told us the ground's a little soft, uh, put down um, pads or, or what have you before you put your, your levelers down. So I did, but I had the plastic ones. I mean, they're about two inches thick, uh, nice heavy duty plastic pads, um, put it down, yeah. but the, the stable outage went right through it about a foot into the ground and broke both the back stabilizers. So oh yeah, God. lesson learned there is if, if the campground tells you the, wa the ground is soft, um, or if you think it's soft, be super careful with putting down your jacks. Um, that that was a big problem. That was uh, that probably put us back sixteen hundred bucks. And you, a couple of days, yeah. Yeah. Um, um, a, a good thing to do to keep in your in your in your kit with you is a couple pieces of like one by one or two by two square of plywood. Yeah. Like some three quarter inch plywood, something you can put your stuff on just to distribute the load. That would be better than those plastic things. I mean, it went right through the plastic things. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so Joanne also asked, and maybe you know what this means because I don't even know what the question means. It, she asked, "What so to Toyos? Okay, Toyos the brand okay. of tire. Oh, okay. So Toyo yeah, Toyo been, tires. Been a lot of controversy about is that better or Michelin or whatever. They're probably all made in Asia. Number one. I'm going to be a hundred percent with everybody right now. Oh, getting real with I have head. Three different oh, types of three. tires. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to remember them. Okay, one. All right, so the front tires are. Um, it's been a uh, while. They're the the ones that are Transforce. They're Transforce HTs on the front. Okay. And I've got Cooper. Something. So I think it's another HT tire, and then I've got something else on the other side. So I. You don't care about tires. tires. Yeah. If you maintain yeah. your tires. They're not gonna. They're not gonna. I'm telling you, tire pressure monitoring and go. You don't even have to worry about anything else because it'll let you know when you hit those parameters. And it doesn't matter what tire it is. Any tire can blow if you run over something wrong. So I mean, just, any tire, it, if it, you if you run over a big square curb, it can ruin the most expensive of tires. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, the only reason to buy Toyos or Michelin if, is if you want to just spend the money and, and feel like you're buying a better tire. If you feel that way, then go for it. But you, the main point is, regardless of what tire you buy, get that tire pressure monitor system on it so you yeah. know what's happening with whatever tire you have. 
as long as as long as you can you can take a look and know what your tires are doing at any given time while you're driving really you can have any tires on there as long as they are, are safe with trim okay this was a, a question someone celeste asked they um took out the carpet in their fifth wheel but there's still some carpet left under the living room slide do they need to try to take out that remaining carpet or can they leave it what are they putting on for floor to replace it? So the, we ran into an issue when we redid our floors. Um, well, I would say that, um, so we have an RV renovations group. You can check it out on Facebook and that's gonna be a great resource for you. But for us, I think we removed all of it and it did actually end up scraping our rig. It completely ruined our brand new floor. I know a lot of people that that doesn't happen. So I would recommend, you know, definitely checking out the thickness of the planks you're buying and, um, you know, checking in Facebook groups and on blogs to make sure, you know, other people have tried this with success. But it, I say if you can keep it on there and the slide comes in and out just fine, I say keep it. The only reason I would say pull it out is because there's about, 150,000 staples holding all of that oh, garbage. Oh, yeah. And those staples, it, it makes it difficult to put the new flooring in and have it be square. She's doing. So I was. But from a like, maintenance point of view, like, does it hurt to keep the carpet? The rest of what she did was peel and stick tiles. Okay. okay, so if it's peel and stick tiles, if it's not bothering anything and it's not bothering you and you're in a happy place with your renovation, Trust me, I know when you're done with the res with the renovation and you could just be like, I'm done, I'm not touching anymore. That is the best feeling. So if you're happy with it, by all means keep it. Yeah, it's not it's not gonna, you know, weigh your coach down. Your coach is already used to having that weight. And it won't get yeah. caught in the rollers, right? Because it was already placed there yeah, already before this well, slide. It is a smaller piece, so it could get caught in a roller. As long as it's not in the way, you can leave it. But if it's going to, you know, hinder movement at all, I would remove it. Yeah, and I would keep an eye on it, you know, every couple months, depending on, you know, how often you travel. If you're a full-timer, of course, you're getting a lot more slide usage. So I would check it more often. Um, but, you know, just make sure it's not fraying and stuff. Yeah. Okay, we had another question an about tires. Oh, tires are popular. Todd, yeah, but Todd Lafon asks, um, he's had problems with valve extenders for the inside dual tire. What brand do you think works best? Spend the most money you can on valve extenders. Something like that is, and, and when you're putting them on, they give you a torque setting. Don't go too tight. Valve extenders are a blessing and a curse all at the same time because you get them all set up and you think everything's good. You park for three months and one of your tires is flat. Mm. So, um, yeah, that's happened to us. Right? <laughs> with valve extenders, with valve extenders, you just have to be more cognizant of your tire pressure. You have to continuously check if you're using extenders because you're putting another, you're, you're just you're putting another air valve in there which is just another place where it can leak right. air and then we get back into the exploding tires again. Yeah. and then there's rumors of china bombs yes that's right <laughs> exactly i think a lot of the china bombs are operator error okay well that, that's would... a that is a hot sports opinion because if you go on these uh facebook groups where everyone's an expert um, I mean, that, they're, 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 everyone is recommending, you know, that's the first thing you do is get rid of those, those tires. No, the thing, the first thing you should do is check your tire pressure and before well, you drive away. Buy a yeah. tire pressure system. Yeah. Instead of, <laughs> instead of replacing four tires and spending hundreds of dollars, buy a tire pressure monitoring system and spend hundreds of dollars. And have it forever. But then you don't have to buy new tires. Yeah. And you're like, oh, oh, hey, tire number five needs some air. Yeah. You just yes. blow it up. Concept. Done. Yeah. 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 It's like your car. You don't have to check your tires in your car anymore because the car tells you when it's good. That's right. It's, it's the same thing as with point. an RV. Because why would you not? Pressure monitoring system. System. So I think we have time for a couple more questions. And then I do want to talk about uh, Fix It Yourself. Enrollment's only open for a few more days. So, uh, what kind of, I see a few more questions here. Um, I think we got through, I do have this one. Let me find it. 
from Kelly Ann, which actually kind of goes right along with what you're asking, saying. Mm -hmm. um, she is about two years out from getting her first RV, so she's asking when would we recommend the class for her to get to be, uh, to be prepared to make her best choice on her rigs. Um, you should get the course right now, my dear. I dropped the link in there um, right now. We launched, well, number one, you want to be as prepared as possible. You know, thinking about this course or like any knowledge coming here um, two years out, that is super smart. So can we get, can we hit the applause oh, for Kellyanne? Oh my gosh. That's awesome. this, I'm, I'm, I'm not a... <laughs> yeah. And applause. Awesome. So I really commend you for that. I know, I mean, when we started RVing, we planned like eight days and then we bought an RV and we had all these problems. So you eight really days. want to start educating yourself right now. And, you know, you can spend a year on YouTube, you know, looking through videos and hearing people's life stories before they get to the point about the China bombs, mm -hmm. or, you know, you can invest 197 right now and just have that information. You can go through it at your own leisure. You get this for a lifetime. And we also allow you to download the videos, which not a lot of online courses do. So you can actually have it when you need it. And right now, um, you know, we've got this uh, student Facebook group you're going to get into and, uh, that's going to, you know, as you have questions, as you go through the course, Ed's in there, I am, Deborah Berry, um, and all the other students. Right now we have over, gosh, over 360 students. Um, and last, I, I forgot my last point, um, but oh, Number three. so last year we, so the price right now is 197. Last year we launched it as a beta for only 97. So I can't guarantee the price of $197, but I can guarantee it today. Um, and you're also going to get over $500 worth of bonuses. That Facebook group I mentioned is a $200 value. The workbook that comes with it is nearly $50. You're going to get a pre-inspection guide, and that's a bonus we're only offering right now. And that's going to be perfect for you if you don't have your rig yet. You're going to be able to go through, know all your systems, and then you're going to have that guide to walk you through things when you actually um, decide to get your rig. Okay, Liz, we did have a new student, another new student, uh, Sue Starkey. She just signed up today, and she has a question, so I'm going to go ahead and ask her question. Um, Sue. Sue's question is, think gray tank expands before it's full of water. Any ideas? Don't let it fill up that much. Oh, boom. <laughs> that was succinct, folks, succinct. <laughs> so the big, I, I have a lot of people ask me all these questions like, oh, what do I do with my tank when it fills up? Or how do I know? Just, just don't let it, just, just don't let it fill up. Figure out a day, figure out a time where you can have a schedule and just, don't let it fill up. If it's expanding and all that, these plastic tanks are meant to hold water, but they're not meant to like hold water forever. For a long I time. I mean, really, we dump our tanks once a week when we're when we're hooked up normally. But we don't shower in our rig, and so it might. If you are full timing Sue, and you're finding that it expands, and you're showering in your rig, doing dishes, you know, living in it like normal people, not like us. Uh, like I said, it's at six foot five, so we'd rather have the closet space. Um, but anyway, yeah, you know, if you if it takes more, if you need to do it every four days, I would just set an alarm on your phone and just you know pull it every four days or you know every seven days, whatever the case is. Um, yeah, because while you can you can fix your holding tanks, and we talk about that in the course. Um, you know, it's just annoying and mm -hmm. probably kind of gross. So you just want to, if you find that it's expanding, think about how many days it took to, you know, like absorb, you know, hold that much water and maybe subtract a day or two and pull it. Yeah. Our black and gray tanks are next to impossible to get to. There's no way I want to do uh, any serious work on those things. Yeah. Right. Especially if you've got a fifth wheel. I mean, they are buried. They are. They are like, it's impossible. I mean, the, the tanks aren't really that easy to get to in the first place. Yeah. So, yeah. so really the Empty. best thing you can do, and you can't 
empty it too soon either. Awesome. You, yeah. There's no, like, you can't, like, if you fill it up a quarter and then if you dump it, it's going to be bad. No, you can empty your tanks at any time. You don't have to wait until they're full. You can fill it up halfway. You can dump it every other day if you want to, but you really don't want to overfill it. That's, We've done that. <laughs> that's bad. I mean, have you ever... Overfilling right. bad. Yes. When water starts okay. coming up into your shower, you know you have gone too far. Um, yeah. Lee, okay, Liz, Lee asked the question, is the course phone and iPad friendly or is it better on a computer? Oh, yes, baby. It is iPhone friendly. You can. I would recommend you did ask about the iPad. It's not exactly super friendly on that. Um, just a lot of mobile sites are not friendly on iPad. Um, but you can watch on your phone. Um, and like I said, you can download the videos so you can watch from wherever. Say, you know, uh, someone's driving, you know, you're going to have a little bit of time. You can download a few videos. And the great thing about our videos is we understand your RVers. And sometimes something might break, you know, your slide doesn't come in. And, oh, yeah, didn't I have that course? And they are going to teach me how to manually put that in. But all of a sudden, your internet is buffering. We understand that. So you can download the videos all in advance so you actually have them in that emergency uh, type of situation. But yes, you can watch this on your phone. It's hosted on an online um, teaching platform called Teachable. A lot, you know, there's like thousands and thousands of courses hosted on there. And um, you can definitely use it on your phone. Awesome. Cool. And I would recommend the Chrome browser. So that's why it's best on your phone and better than an iPad because an iPad uses Safari. And uh, that's just not where it needs to be as far as versus Firefox or Chrome. Look at Liz throwing the tech stuff around. See? Booyah, booyah, Look at all booyah. this information. <laughs> wow. uh, and, and Camille wants to just say that that's really cool. You let people download the videos. She doesn't even do that. <laughs> no, she doesn't. Mm, and, uh, maybe we should reconsider. I, hmm. I just think, yeah, you know, if you get the course today, they're downloadable, but maybe in the future, you know, <laughs> Deborah and Barry might change their mind. But I just, you know, for right now, you know, you guys are RVers. You're going to be out there. I want you to have the videos um, yeah. when, you know, when we well, say you, lifetime, we mean it. Yeah, yeah, and you might have to take it outside. So you want to be able to watch it when you're actually outside doing something. Yeah, and yeah. not everybody has great internet like Liz does, so it's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Ouch! <laughs> All right. Well, hey, we're about we're a little over an hour into this, right? So. All right. There. Uh, All right. Are there any I other want to present? talk about a little bit more about the course, just real quick. If you're considering it, like I said, you should definitely get it today. Enrollment ends May third. But our bonuses tonight, we've got four bonuses, and they're worth over 500 or nearly $500. Um, so first, the course itself is broken down into eight modules. And I have my notes because I always forget at least one. <laughs> it's a lot, folks. And uh, the slide module, as I think we mentioned earlier, is brand new. And Ed's going to teach you how to identify what type of slide you have and how to pull it in or take it out in an emergency because – I know if you've owned an RV for more than a few months, you know, you've heard that horror story. Camille in the comments, she's got one. Or, you know, you've been there yourself. So that's the newest slide. We've also got generators, like Ed was talking about earlier. If you if you need to know more, like, okay, well, that's great, Ed, but what if it doesn't start? What should I do? He's got all of that in there. We're talking about heating and cooling. You know, that AC, how do we... How do we clean it without electric, you know, electrocuting ourselves? We're going to talk about that. We got propane safety. I know a lot of people are really scared about propane. Um, you know, Ed breaks it down really simply. So you're able to check on those systems and make sure they're running right. Uh, next, we got electrical and batteries. Ed does a great um, little series on how to do the battery series, right? Yeah, how to do series and uh, series parallel and how to do parallel, how to do different um, battery wiring configurations. So we're, you know, like we were talking about earlier with taking the propane out, making sure you have enough electricity. We'll talk about that with batteries. And also all the stuff we were talking about at the beginning um, about electrical. And I was like, well, what's that? What's that? He talks about that in the course. And also, of course, tire maintenance, Ed, 
you know, clearly is um, a proponent of keeping your tires maintained. <laughs> he showed you how to do that and your roof. We didn't even really talk about water damage tonight, but you need to keep your roof maintained. Oh, yeah. He's going to teach you how to do that super easily. And um, your water systems, well, that's where we're talking about tanks. That's where we're talking about water filters, how to, you know, keep your tanks safe and clean, how to make sure your water doesn't taste, how do you say it? Terrible. Yo, it's terrible. Terrible. <laughs> terrible. <laughs> um, yeah, so those paint modules. And then again, you know, all of those together, that's worth over $500. Um, you know, each module individually priced would be anywhere from $50 to $100. And you're going to be able to go through, okay, Ed, you know, I know this students that have been working on their rigs as well. And Ed charges $150 an hour just to diagnose and things like that. So you're going to get all of that for free in the Facebook group. And speaking of that $150, we're going to do another live Q&A, um, probably about 30 days after uh, you join the course, so that you're able to go through the course, really get down what questions you really need to ask about your rig or about your potential rig, what you should be looking for as you you know, learn more systems and Ed's going to go live with you guys and, you know, you'll be able to see face to face. You'll be able to, you know, have your phone. Hey, Ed, can you look at this real quick? And that's another $197 value. And then, of course, for, you know, Kellyanne and people like her that don't have their rigs yet, but are super smart and want to get a jump start, you're also going to get that pre-purchase inspection guide. And that's going to walk through everything that you need to check on. Um, before you buy your rig, and that's worth $47. So in total, all of this is worth over $1,000. We're going to give it to you tonight. Deborah, if you could pop the sales page into the comments, if you have it, for only $197. And, um, you know, you also get email support. There's four of us. You know, somebody's bound to know the answer, right, if we don't. But as you can see, Ed knows a lot. He went to the RV Service Academy in Palmetto, Florida. It's one of only two that actually teaches you how to be an RV tech. I know there's a lot of talk about other schools that are much cheaper, um, but those really just teach you how to inspect an RV. They don't teach you how to actually fix it. So as a certified RV tech, he's a pro. He talks loud, but we love him. <laughs> I talk loud. Too. Um, so yeah, I'd love, I you know, consider this your official invite into the course. We'd love to have you. We have nearly... Gosh, I guess oh, almost 400 students now in just 13 months, and we'd love for you to be one too. Yeah, someone just commented that they're going to sign up right Two after this Two people call. say they're going to yeah. sign up. Joanne and Laura say they're going to sign up right after this is over. And we did have one question from Tamara. Does the course include a maintenance checklist and instructions? Yes. So that's another bonus I didn't even mention. So we're going to we have with, within the workbook, within the workbook, you're going to have that maintenance schedule where you can write it all down, keep track. You're going to have that tool list that's really in depth, how you use those tools, where you're going to find the tools, stuff like that. And I did, I've got people that already purchased today, so I want to give them a shout out. Ed, will you do the, will you do this real quick? Well, we stand up. Oh. Vanna White, Vanna White. <laughs> Uh, so we've got Ron join the course today. Oh, pull up your pants. We're on TV. <laughs> so welcome, Ron. Ron, if you're watching, hey, I know he's asking about, he asked me before he purchased about the video format. And like I said, um, it's on Teachable, which is an online learning platform. And it's just like YouTube. You'll be able to go in. You'll see the course on the, you know, Left-hand side, you'll be able to click through the modules. There's a lot of people, so you need to keep standing. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> you a white. <laughs> and, you know, you'll be able to watch right there. So that was another great question. We've got Tim. <laughs> yeah, good. We've got Kirk. I can hear you. Okay. No problems. We're running with it. It's... Uh, we've got Tom and Patricia. We already have Patricia and we have Bob, John, and Steve. So welcome all Yay. the new Fix It Yourself students. Are so glad. And did you, you get Heidi? Any more? Who? Heidi. Hi. I was able to do it, so I know you're able to do it too. So welcome to all the new students. Yay. Uh, Deborah, I think you have one more question. Uh, no, I think I got it. Nope. I think we're good. All right. 
Awesome. And if you guys have any questions, happy to answer. And, you know, yeah, get the course, guys. Over $1,000 awesome. in value. We're giving it away for just one ninety seven until May 3rd. Yay. Awesome. Thank you, Liz. Thank you guys so much. Yeah, thanks, and Seth, thank for you. It was on. great information. We're getting lots of great compliments on the chat about people thanking us and telling us it was a great evening and they got a lot of out of it. And many of them are going to go now and check out the course. So thank you so much. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks. I'm going to drop that uh, link in the comments a couple more times while you guys play that awesome outro. All right. Awesome. awesome. Okay. Awesome. You guys All take right. care of yourselves. Be safe. Good seeing you. Bye. Thank you. Much. All right. Well, that was, that was a lot of information. A lot of information. Yeah, that was. <laughs> Smokes. Yeah. All and right. um, just to play on actually what we were talking about today, uh, next month is National Home Improvement Month, yes. we found out. And so buying the course is your first step to doing some home improvements. But we're also next month in May going to have some more people visiting us that are going to talk about different types of home improvement and things we can all do to our rigs. Yes. Outside of just maintenance, I there's other things. I can virtually guarantee that almost three out of the next five. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have lots for of, hedging guy We're going to have some great guest speakers and gonna we're going to have some other information. Yeah. That's right. So it's gonna definitely, it's going to be awesome. So look forward to seeing you uh, next month with all those people. And yeah. let us know if there's something about renovations or home improvement that you would like to hear, learn yeah. more about. And we'd be happy to go see if we can find somebody that can share some information. Yeah. So thanks for being here. I know we ran a little long, yep. but uh, Good thank you so much for sticking around. It was great to see everybody uh, out there. And um, I want to uh, make sure that you subscribe, uh, hit that bell for notifications. Um, you know, we, we, we made a thousand subscribers on, on YouTube. So thank you so much for that. Uh, the next plateau is 1100. So <laughs> tell all your friends we can do this. So share this with your travel loving friends. We appreciate it. And uh, just remember, you're really important to this community. We appreciate that you're here. You're all part of it. Uh, we want to be a place for this to be a community, resources, and stories. Um, so For our RV community. Yes. So uh, until we can get together again safely and travel around this beautiful land, we hope to see you around the virtual campground. See so you at the campfire. That's right. So stay tuned for the, the closing slideshow. Uh, we'll be chatting in the comments. So uh, look forward to seeing you there. Take care. Have a wonderful evening.